Hi everyone, welcome back to my Roller Coaster Tycoon Deluxe build series. This is episode 10, and in this one we'll be going through Aqua Park. Aqua Park is an interesting one in that uh, you get all of the unlockables in the original scenario set. So all of the theming, all of the rides, uh, unfortunately you don't get a whole lot of land to play with in this particular scenario. There's no land to buy, there's no uh, park rights land, and the land that you do get is largely taken up by a lake, and the surrounding area is pretty hilly, so you have to be fairly inventive with how you go about this. In addition to that, there's some rides already available coming into it, three water rides, a water slide, a double log flume, and a river rapid. The approach I decided to take this time around was to include as many of the theming items as I could. I wanted to touch on all of the various themes, and that is the mining theme, the Roman theme, the Egyptian theme, the alien theme, and the fantasy theme. Although it is a small area, so I don't use each one a whole bunch. I just sort of uh, flavor different parts of the park with them and try to blend them together nicely. I mostly leave the far, uh, what would that be, the eastern side of the park as the Egyptian side followed by the Roman area, and then the other themes uh, sort of blend the other area together with the alien theme on the far western side of the park. I decided at the beginning I would uh, create my two food courts as there is a fair path network already established in this map. And I didn't want my guests to be getting too uh, hungry or thirsty or have to go to the bathroom. And I wanted uh, umbrellas nearby if possible. I then decided to complete the circuit so that there would be path going all the way around the park. And then from this point, once I have the circuit, I would be able to just focus on each individual area. I sort of complete small areas before moving on in this one. Once I have the overall layout anyway, um, I do sort of go off and like play some roller coasters and things a little bit later on to just get a feel for the area but for the most part this is a very gradual build where once I have this initial layout set up and uh, these initial transport rides which I decided to go with the boat hire transport ride and a chairlift which sort of have like opposing stations so the boat hire has stations on the eastern and western side of the park and the chairlift has stations on the southern and northern side of the park and this uh, provides a direct shortcut to the opposite side of the park and hopefully spreads out the people. I pretty much left all of the colors and things default at first. I wasn't sure what theming and uh, surroundings would be around these rides as I got to them. So I just sort of left it open. And then uh, I decided I would focus on the entrance for a good amount. I pretty much don't leave the entrance until after I pass the map. Uh, but I do try to make it fairly detailed. I wanted to sort of create like a raised area and then it would descend down into the park and just give myself a little bit more flat surface to uh, build on up there as well as some additional uh, buildings and stuff to give it more character. I really wanted to make the areas in this map quite dense so there isn't a whole lot of open space. Uh, near the log flume I leave it kind of open. I had like a lot of trees and things like that but uh, 
I didn't really add a whole lot in the way of buildings or anything over there. I do like the uh, log flume as is. I really like how the path goes up and over it. I think that's pretty cool. So I wanted to leave it kind of untouched as uh, the more wilderness uh, section of the park. At the beginning, I decided that I would have mostly just sort of a generic theme. I didn't want to target any of the particular themes for the entrance area, more so just uh, going for a sort of roller coaster tycoon, I guess you could say. Uh, aside from sort of uh, making the haunted house a little more on the drab side of things, I guess you could say, I really wanted to have the uh, area go up and over the water slide station. I didn't end up changing the water slide in this scenario build even though the design is problematic. I decided just to go for the strategy of uh, closing and reopening the slide if uh, tubes got stuck, which they ended up getting stuck quite a bit. I kind of wish I had opted to change it. Though I did want to keep the original ride as uh, original as possible, I really uh, would like to keep with that aesthetic throughout these builds uh, unless absolutely necessary that I change something. I do change the colors in the end though once I sort of get a feel for each area and uh, the station buildings and that type of thing though. Next, I wanted to get my chairlift up and running uh, to sort of help with the distribution of the people more as I wasn't going to be spending a whole lot of time on infrastructure as I built out the various areas and I wanted to try to have something that would uh, scale pretty well for the number of people that I was expecting as I needed this to pretty much last until I met the goal. It worked pretty well. Uh, I decided I would have two sort of large station buildings uh, built into the hill on one side and uh, a larger one just sort of freestanding with a bridge uh, leading to it on the northern side. I then wanted to put uh, some thrill rides and some filler rides wherever I could. I decided an interesting spot for the pirate ship would be up and like over top of the river rapids and then I wanted to sort of make the queue line uh, extend up and over the river rapids too and I thought that was pretty cool, sort of like a deck and the uh, river rapids goes under the deck before going into the underground section. I finally felt I had enough of the initial infrastructure to build that I could begin the theming process and uh, I just started basically from the front right at the entrance and worked my way out. I decided I would go with the green checkered uh, pavement. I hadn't used it yet, I realized, uh, throughout all the different builds. I've used pretty much every color except for the green one, so figured, hey, why not? Uh, let's make the entrance green. Uh, it won't be used anywhere else in the park, uh, but coming up here in Millennium Mines, I, I might make heavy use of that one. We'll see. really like the idea of having the uh, paths and everything up above the water slide area and then uh, I sort of cover the water slide down below in walls and uh, I think it looked pretty good in the end. I was pretty happy with uh, the density and just uh, how interesting it all looked. 
Uh, I put the water slide through like another building that the uh, path also goes under and I think that ended up looking pretty good as well. I just did it all in brick as I think brick is pretty good, pretty generic. But uh, blends in with almost all of the themes I think. Uh, pretty close. There we go done the scenario as you can see I didn't end up building a whole lot as there there's a lot in this park like ready to go right off the bat uh, you don't need to actually build a whole lot in this park in fact I I think that people have passed it like without building anything if I remember right you just have to pump ads basically there's more than enough rides and uh, things to keep them occupied for the short uh, scenario playthrough but now that this scenario playthrough is done, I'm able to uh, really expand on the theming. Uh, I did spend a good majority of the time just on this entrance area. I really wanted to make it look nice before I began the uh, blending process into the surrounding areas. That was probably the most challenging aspect of this build, was just uh, fitting in so much themes in such a small area and having it all blend nicely and look proper and not just like uh, a little weird and stuff like that. Uh, but I think in the end I did a pretty good job on overall, like I, I think everything flows pretty naturally, there isn't really any jarring uh, theming changes aside from the change into uh, Egypt with the desert uh, but I did put sort of like a separating wall and uh, the entrance also goes through a tunnel into Egypt so it, it really is like its own sort of world separate from the rest of the park I thought it would be neat if the uh, bumper cars was underneath just right next to the water and uh, provided a little bit of a, a better support better looking support because it's, it's not really a, a real support uh, but a better looking support for the chairlift I couldn't really decide if uh, I wanted to change the bumper cars or not as this design is proven to be pretty problematic. Although through this playthrough I actually had no problems with the bumper cars. I was really surprised. There was a really, I think, I think maybe there was one time when a boat was out too long but that was it and uh, yeah the bumper cars were all able to find their their way back uh, to the station no problem I just put the uh, surrounding sort of border with the rowboat and it worked great I was really surprised because uh, usually I get rid of that thing is it looks problematic uh, but no it was fine I really did crowd the area around it though uh, later I put a roller coaster through there as well uh, still no issues though the boats were fine for the uh, bumper car but uh, I thought it looked pretty cool with all of the uh, stuff there, the fountains and then later the roller coaster. It's uh, this roller coaster here. It's a, uh, um, oh boy, quarter pipe, you know, the, uh, oh, why can't I remember the name of it now? Anyway, you all know which one it is. Um, but yeah. Uh, this roller coaster I thought was uh, pretty fun to build right here. I wanted to put uh, a uh, inversion into the building like that and that ended up working like perfect actually. Uh, I just had just enough uh, speed to do what I wanted to do. I did have to make the cars a little longer than I wanted or the, uh, the trains rather with the number of cars that I had to put on a train. I ended up only getting two trains uh, just because of what I wanted to do here at the entrance area where I wanted the uh, track to sort of go down and dip down and then come up when, uh, with a steep uh, quarter turn there with the camera up above and then dip down again 
uh, into a tunnel, come up over the other side, and yeah, I really wanted it to like twist and turn through the entrance area buildings. Uh, I did have to play with this one quite a bit to get some decent stats and to get it to actually complete the track and things, but uh, overall, uh, pretty good. I wasn't so happy with this section here where it came up and over the building. I, I thought it was a little flat and boring, but uh, I couldn't actually come up with any other ideas that would really work. I did try a bunch. Some of them I think I recorded but um, or included in this video, but uh, some of them I cut because it was just... Uh, I completely reverted everything I did and it was back to exactly what it was. I thought uh, the souvenir station, or souvenir stall, not station rather, stall, uh, right by the uh, food court there was pretty neat because it has the uh, slanted roof. So if you look carefully uh, next time I come around here on the other side of the wooden building there, uh, I actually slipped the food court stall in. Um, next to some slanted land which I think looks pretty neat it looks like it just blends right in uh, so that was cool I really thought that was a, a good spot for it I do throw souvenir stalls around quite a bit in this one uh, as I didn't want to sort of pollute the land with too many food courts Here I am trying to get uh, a good angle and speed that I can actually get over there. I almost had to scrap this plan as uh, I hadn't put the chain lift quite high enough and uh, eventually I do make the chain lift just, it, all it needed was one tile higher uh, in the end. So that was pretty cool but I just had to make it one tile higher so that it had a little bit more speed on this uh, curved first drop into the coaster and uh, worked pretty good in the end. Uh, but yeah I did have to play with it quite a bit to get something that worked appropriately. Ah yes here we go here's me trying to do something better and I could not. Uh, they're just uh, the reason is is that there just isn't any clearance underneath the uh, chairlift. I was hoping that there was more clearance, but there just wasn't. There was, in reality, there was only like two tiles or something like that. And uh, it looks like a lot because it's a chairlift and it's only the uh, wires that you can see unless it's running. But unfortunately, the clearance height underneath it uh, is deceiving. I do apologize for having uh, such a long period of time between video releases. I was working on some other uh, infrastructure for phase two of this channel. Uh, I've always planned to expand and uh, I didn't actually expect so much growth. So thanks for that. Thanks for uh, sticking with me. It's been uh, incredible. Uh, getting so many subscribers. Uh, a few of you noticed in the community section, I made a note of 69 subscribers. Uh, you know, I was counting, so I posted the count. Um, that also marked the beginning of preparing for phase two, as I do want to have the infrastructure in place for phase two. Uh, basically, you know, uh, there before I get um, a larger number of subscribers, say like 100 subscribers or 150, 200 subscribers. I'm not sure, um, but it would be nice to have the initial infrastructure ready to go so that I can start building that stuff out more. Um, so there will be some more announcements and things upcoming on what phase two entails and uh, what type of content I'm going to be expanding into. Uh, I finally completed the roller coaster. I wasn't sure on the color scheme. I just sort of played around with some stuff and in the end I decided that uh, red to 
go alongside the slide would be fine. Although I think I changed the slide to something a little less red. Was it the slide? I can't remember now. I guess we'll find out. Um, then I decided to uh, create one of these launch coasters. I hadn't built one of these yet. The first one you get is in Katie's World. And I had actually debated putting one of those down, but I figured uh, keeping with the light water valley uh, aesthetic that I was going for, I wouldn't ruin it with a big giant pole roller coaster sticking up out of nowhere uh, that isn't there in the real theme park. So I did not build it in that one. Uh, but given that uh, you get it in this one, I decided, yes, I am definitely going to build it. And I figured it would work best in the space section, uh, really fit in well there. At this point, I was pretty well just throwing in finishing touches into the entrance area uh, before I moved on to the space area. Or, uh, well, really, I guess the uh, the fantasy area is, is probably the smallest area. I only use the fantasy stuff really for surrounding the uh, merry-go-round. And only at that, I really only used the mushrooms and things. I didn't go very uh, fantasy on this map. But the other themes I use a, a little bit more extensively. I figured I would keep the area in front of the merry-go-round uh, more or less as is. I do change the terrain and add trees and make it a little bit more interesting that way. Uh, but I decided I wouldn't put any rides or anything additionally in front of that area. And I would like just having the uh, slide and uh, having a nice open part where you could see the slide there. I tried to use the trees from the surrounding corners. Uh, that's something that's kind of interesting in this map as well is that uh, the different sides of the map actually vary the sort of natural trees of the landscape. So uh, I really tried to play into that and utilize the trees and expand on the existing landscapes in all but a few areas, not the uh, alien area, obviously, and not the desert area, obviously. I did make another attempt at the uh, sort of space shuttle station that uh, I had tried last time around. I think this one turned out better. I put the cues around it like I had thought of and uh, has a nice effect with having the path um, supports with that sort of... Uh, chain link style all around. I put a bridge and uh, then the paths going around the sort of building that connects to it. I think this one's way better than the one that I did in uh, Dinky Park. I also put the slide going into the building underneath of it. Finally, I decided that I may as well put uh, a part of the launch coaster into that building too and give some varied height to uh, the supports on the back side just to make it a little bit more interesting. I figured I would go and uh, replace all the land in this area again with the uh, Martian. It was a good spot for it. I think um, if it was going to be anywhere, it would have to be here because of the corner allows the, uh, you know, there's like that bridge area. 
right there, which is a, a good separating aspect. And then on the other side, you have the log flume, which is going to get more into the wildernessy area. So it was fairly simple to make a dividing line uh, between the two of those. And I think it looked pretty good. Side, I'd make a nice station for the mini steel roller coaster. Uh, I couldn't really get anything better for the path, so I figured I'd just throw it up and over and then come down around. Uh, given it's the space area, having lots of elevated paths uh, isn't necessarily a bad thing, at, whereas in other areas I usually try to avoid those, whether I'm building uh, a bridge or something, then I will use the elevated pass. But I like things to be nice and supported with land and make sense. But in uh, a space area where uh, it just makes sense that there will be lots of elevated sort of uh, futuristic paths and the launch uh, coaster is up on a path. And though I did give it some sort of grounded support around the station and the, uh, the launch area. I was pretty happy with the uh, space area in this uh, particular playthrough. I don't know if it uh, necessarily lives up to the Dinky Park one. Uh, I didn't use the drop coaster in this map which uh, I figured that given that I was using the launch coaster uh, and I had just used the drop coaster. I don't want to overdo it uh, and use different rides, rides that I hadn't um, either used before or hadn't used in some time. Well, aside from the steel coaster, I did use the steel coaster in Dinky Park and I do use it again here, but the, the steel coaster and the mini steel coaster are almost like uh, staples. They're, you know, utility roller coasters you definitely want them probably if uh, you have them unlocked I'm pretty sure they're almost in every scenario uh, steel roller coaster isn't in dynamite dunes I think it's in everything else though the combination of the rocket roller coaster and the uh, water slide was pretty neat I thought going into the open area the rockets again lose a lot of their momentum pretty quickly but I was able to get it to do a little dive into a tunnel right next to the launch roller coaster here I am bordering the area between the alien area and the what will become the sort of wildernessy uh, log flume area. I wanted the log flume area to be pretty like uh, dirt and lots of trees, some log cabins, that type of thing. I decided I'd put a little, uh, I don't know, what is that, like a satellite dish or something. I think the next map, I'm going to try to go for something uh, a little different in terms of the theming. I've already looked it up, it's Millennium Mines, and uh, you only get the mining and alien theming, uh, which I've both done now extensively. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can mix it up a bit and make something interesting with the two of them. But uh, we'll see how that turns out. I haven't even begun on that yet. So hopefully that goes well. But, uh, you know, no promises. It might just end up being alien and mine. Which uh, I do have some ideas for that too. I think that will look pretty neat as well if uh, I have to go that route. Uh, but I do hope I can sort of blend the two together and make something pretty interesting that way. I really do like the uh, path network around the log flume. I wanted to keep that intact and make it a bit more on the wooden and dirty side.
I figured I would make the primary connecting path of the log flume area inside the hill. The path inside the hill ends up connecting both to this uh, inverted ship between the north and the south and uh, it does end up connecting underground into the chairlift station as well. I connect that later on as it just seemed to make sense to do. I really wanted to uh, add some interesting features to this area but not take away the overall uh, look and feel that I felt that it was kind of going for. Heading into the log flume area, I thought it would be neat if it had the uh, iron walls and uh, you'd sort of go in a tunnel and come out the other side. So both entrances into the area, I believe, are tunneled. No. No, the one from uh, the Roman area is not, but it does go around the hill. No, no, it is it is tunneled because it goes tunneled into the Roman hill. So there is one Roman building on the other side of the hill. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I thought that was pretty neat though. The, uh, the tunneled area kind of comes out, has a little like uh, dock and walk by the lake. And uh, I end up putting a pizza stall on the edge of that a little later on as I felt that there was just a little too much space between food courts and uh, some of these peeps might be getting hungry. I thought throwing a nice little water feature right there underneath the uh, log flume would be pretty interesting. I did try to keep the rides sort of oriented towards their theme. So I didn't want to have like uh, futuristic rides in not futuristic areas. Though, you know, there's only so many rides and so many things you can do. For instance, I end up putting the observation tower in Egypt. But, I mean, that's fine. We're, I don't know where else it would go. A lot of them would probably end up being in space if, you know, it was sort of honest. Uh, but I think I did a pretty good job spacing them out and uh, providing gentle rides and thrill rides. And uh, later on, I do a suspended roller coaster, which uh, I aim to try to get, like, quite high intensity. 10 intensity, if not almost 10. I think the end result ended up being like 9.97 or 9.93. Uh, I got pretty close. Uh, it, it was a pretty neat coaster. I should be building that shortly once I get done with the log flume area. Adding some uh, mining town detail this is where i used the uh, majority of the mine town stuff was in and around the log flume put a sort of like uh, dock there i didn't really end up having enough space to give it the look i was kind of aiming for i mean it does end up working in the end but uh i wish i had another uh row of water there just to give a bit more separation and uh, the water does go underneath the paths too those are bridges uh, it's just not very visible I figured there was enough space in front of the uh, rowboats there to uh, put a, what did I put, a swan ride, I believe, and uh, some more 
infrastructure to sort of connect things. Uh, the infrastructure also provides the height to put a tunnel network underneath that connects to the Swan Ride entrance. And uh, it was this entrance that sort of prompted the uh, obvious strategy of, you know, connecting all of the inner sides uh, when I had thought of probably putting an entrance there. That was what prompted me to connect inside the hill between the chairlift and the other side and prepare the infrastructure for this. It's a pretty big building for a swan ride, admittedly, uh, but it does make use of the log flume as well. It's got some interaction there, and uh, it's also useful later on for uh, infrastructure and underlying infrastructure of the suspended, uh, or rather, I guess it's an inverted roller coaster uh, that I build with the high intensity. Once again, another souvenir stall. I figured that was a good spot for it, given it would blend in pretty well. I tried to put uh, the gray mushrooms all over the place. I really do think they blend in well. So I did use them in areas that were not explicitly fantasy areas and I used the uh, polka dot mushrooms in the fantasy area near the merry-go-round. In the log flume area I actually decided to keep a fair amount of the siding of the terrain dirt as I thought it just blended in well and looked pretty good. So instead of changing it, which uh, originally I was going to change it to probably the black uh, sort of iron type uh, wall, but what I ended up doing instead was using the, the light iron and uh, dirt. And I think the end result uh, was perfect for the area even with the uh, abundance of wood and things. I think that's actually what did it, is that uh, there's so much wood and brown texture in the area that the uh, lighter blacks and things, when they contrast with all of that, uh, really helps to make those features stand out, like the uh, one that's above the log flume there with the little house on it. I think that was a good addition. Now I finally start on the station for the next uh, roller coaster, which is the inverted high intensity coaster. This one took me quite a while to uh, build and get right. I kept going right over the uh, 10.0 intensity, so I'd get like 10.03 or 10.05. But I did eventually get it close enough that uh, I deemed it acceptable and uh, guests would ride it. And it was pretty popular too, a lot of uh, high intensity guests in this park. I wanted to make a pretty good use of the inversions. So I do a lot of inversions uh, as well as uh, quite a few iterations here to get a more smooth looking coaster. Uh, in fact, I completely scrap this initial design and uh, go with something that starts with a large helix into a large loop eventually. Uh, once I realized that I just didn't have the height to do the number of inversions I wanted after that start. So here we go, we're now starting with the large half loop. And then I wanted it to uh, come down and go through that building and uh, turn into a large uh, vertical loop. 
And then uh, at this point, I wanted it to go up and around the chairlift. And I was thinking that I would do an inversion here, but um, I would wait and see what the intensity was. Uh, I mean for uh, some sort of like a scorpion tail or something like that over the chairlift instead of what I ended up doing but the intensity was so close that I didn't bother. I just connected it here to get a feel for what the uh, intensity was going to look like and how much uh, momentum I would have coming off of that. Uh, I figured I would do the scorpion tail here into uh, an inverted barrel roll and then the quarter inversion and see what this would do. Um, but I end up changing this again and making it a little longer as well. I actually really like this uh, coaster. I think this is one of my favorite coasters that I've built for the series so far actually uh, just uh, it looks really fun it looks really neat when it goes through all of the inversions and I think I did a fairly decent job of uh, making the inversions look smooth instead of jarring Definitely get rid of this color though. I don't know what's up with this uh, beige. Eventually I'll try to use this in an actual theme, I think, but uh, not today. We're not doing that today. It is not gonna stay beige. I thought the River Rapids would make uh, a really interesting sort of contrast with the Roman theming. I didn't want it to be all foresty like the log flume area. I wanted it to be nice and clean with nice lawns and sort of brick siding along the uh, river rapids and then descending down into the sort of like dock area. I decided I would use the food court area as the transition point for the paths between the wilderness the area of the log flume and the more proper area of the Roman uh, I don't know building castle whatever it is it's the station for the roller coaster I it would end up working pretty well I think as well as with the uh, path that sort of runs along the river rapids it makes a nice natural barrier as well I of course continued the uh, bush walls and the hedge walls around the river rapids and log flume respectively. I decided I would see if I could get this to work a little better. Uh, in the end I think um, I pretty much didn't change much. Uh, it was just about getting the right velocity at the right time. I decided to put a helix there instead of the drop to uh, slow it down a bit more and not have it go through this uh, so quickly. Uh, I decided to throw another quarter inversion just before the ending. As I did like the barrel roll that went into the station from earlier, uh, I just couldn't replicate it once I had the rest of it, but uh, the barrel roll up above I think is pretty neat and then when it comes through it sort of does a uh, scorpion tail into the barrel roll into the quarter loop and then uh, continues. Given I had to raise the height of the building, I figured I would just sort of uh, restyle it at that height and make it look a little bit better. I really did like having the roller coaster running through it uh, alongside all of the other things that 
building became quite useful. I figured I would put the entrance sort of up and around and then through, and then the uh, lower tunnel is the connection to the other side of the hill, which would also provide the uh, intersection to Egypt a little bit later on. I wasn't sure how I should style the building against the hill. I didn't want the building to look like it was part of the hill, uh, but there also wasn't a whole lot of clearance up above. So I did my best to try and make something that was a little bit interesting, but didn't have to go too tall. And uh, I wanted to also have some sort of like uh, interconnectivity between that and uh, the lower swan building but in the end i actually decided to leave them as separate buildings and not put like a visible connecting conduit and just threw some trees in between and i think that uh ended up looking better not quite so dense and uh you know full of in infrastructure because it is supposed to be like the wilderness and things like that at the back of the log flume area, I decided I would put uh, a truck ride. Uh, there was just so much space there, and it was really between that or some sort of flat ride. But I figured that a flat ride wouldn't really make very good use of the space. Uh, I wasn't sure what I would do theming wise except put a whole bunch of trees and I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting and so I figured I would go for like uh, a sort of into the terrain truck ride that would go around at the back there. I was actually really happy with the end result of this one especially with the way the uh, the paths ended up working and um, yeah I really like the uh, the design of this one overall. It really went in well with the sort of uh, path architecture that was already existing as well uh, with the whole wood and then uh, so coming into like this building at the back and then you can come out and then go up and over the log flume or go down into the station. Yeah, really nice. I really, 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 really like this area of the park. I thought, uh, I don't know, it's uh, tough to choose which area of the park I like the most, but it, this one's definitely a contender. Once I finish the truck area here, I move on to the Roman area, and then it's pretty much Egypt, and that's the end of this. The Roman area I wanted to spread across the uh, lake from to be on both the north and the south side, uh, as I didn't leave a whole lot of room for it on either side, and so I figured that I would allow it to stretch between the two. I also make use of wood a little bit in the Roman area, down by the docks and stuff like that, but I tried to make it different than the wilderness area. Yeah, I really like how this turned out, uh, with the fences and the little bridge there and the tunnel. Yeah, pretty neat. Now it was just a matter of uh, polishing up the area before moving on. I did spend a lot of time uh, just getting the detail and things in there. I didn't want it to be just plain and whatever. I also gave it a little bit more texture with some like uh, rocky 
hillsides and a bit more props and stuff around the chairlift. Another little cabin here on the side to uh, give the path a bit more definition so it looked like it was kind of leading up to something. Also gave me a bit more opportunity to use some of the uh, Mine Town accessories as I had been pretty sparse on using them in the hillier section. Uh, but I tried to make up for that at the back here. When I go through and put bushes, I usually try to look at every angle as often bushes will look full from one angle in this game. But then you uh, turn the camera and you it, you end up seeing like almost none of them because they're like hidden from trees and so uh, especially with the quarter tile bushes, there are definitely ones where you want to check out every angle. Don't just assume that because it looks full from one angle that uh, it's going to look good from other angles. I figured I would uh, complete the theming on this other roller coaster station. Uh, once again, making it uh, a nice Roman theme. I don't do very much else with the uh, Roman theming, just uh, in terms of rides. I, I Oh, I do add the Gravitron, I believe, in the uh, roller coaster uh, sort of looping section here. I was quite happy with the end result of this building. I thought it looked pretty uh, grand, pretty Roman-y. And uh, with the way the roller coaster kind of looped in and out of it, that was uh, perfect. Now I figured I would throw the uh, Gravitron in between the roller coaster tracks just to give another uh, thrill ride in this area. Theme-wise, I wanted to keep this pretty basic, sort of like uh, maybe a Roman courtyard or something along those lines. Uh, I kept it outdoors. I didn't want to add any additional buildings or anything in this area. I did give it a nice platform though. I didn't want it to be uh, just against the land. I, I wanted it to be developed, uh, but not necessarily uh, as uh, grandiose as the roller coaster building. Uh, I, and I kept with the uh, dirty grass terrain sort of around the back and around the sides but then wanted the nice pristine grass uh, for the lawn and I, I think the blending of the two worked out pretty good. I think it gives a pretty clean look that uh, makes sense for the area. You wouldn't have like the best grass uh, where the roller coaster is going near the back there. Figured I'd give a little bit more detail to uh, the front around the River Rapids. Do some blending and some uh, polish just in and around areas. I did have a couple crashes on this playthrough. Uh, one was a badly timed brake failure on the inverted coaster. I think the water slide actually ended up crashing once too. I wasn't watching it and enough slides had built up that one actually hit one with enough speed that the other one exploded. Uh, otherwise they usually just sort of gang up and sit in the tube for a while. I was really tempted to redesign that slide, but 
it looks so good in the open area on the northern side of the park that uh, yeah I just couldn't do it finally I figured I would give the tunnel into the hill uh, some sort of reason for existing or some sort of infrastructure around it as this is the Roman area uh, so I turn it into a little bit of a sort of like a house or something uh, so you go into the house uh, through a side entrance there and then you can just continue under the hill and come out on the back side of the castle I didn't have any path navigation issues uh, in this map, so that was good. It's a pretty small map though, and given that I made the whole thing circular, uh, it made sense. I was a little worried about some of the uh, longer sort of dead end paths near the back and into Egypt, but they didn't prove to be any problem. just finishing up the end of the Roman area here add some polish and then I'll move on to the Egyptian area well I don't know why I had such trouble saying that Egyptian area there we go and uh, with the Egyptian area I ended up putting the nice Egyptian walls all around it I tried to keep walls on the fencing for the park boundary all throughout I thought that uh, it would look pretty good I always try to remember that but looking back at some of the past builds uh, there have been a lot of areas where I totally forgot to do it and I had actually intended to do it so I made extra sure this time around going around the whole park that the uh, entire park boundary fence had a, a nice like themed fence up against it There's the uh, wall that I was talking about that separates Rome and Egypt. I figured putting the uh, Roman wall against the back of it was okay, even though that's technically in uh, Egyptian territory. I didn't want the uh, Egyptian sort of lighter color blending through the Roman architecture. I thought that the uh, Roman wall would look better at the back and it still looks okay inside the Egyptian area. However, around the uh, back side and stuff, I do use the Egyptian brick fence. The Egyptian area I didn't do very much with. I didn't decide to uh, build any elaborate houses or anything like that really. I do make use of the pyramid and the sphinx. In terms of uh, the architecture, I actually make use of like platforms a lot more than I normally would in an area like this. I wanted to initially make a lot of it underground, uh, but I just didn't know what I would do for rides really into the Egyptian area. Uh, aside from one more roller coaster, the uh, observation tower, and I end up putting the Ferris wheel too, as I hadn't built that yet either. And that's pretty much the rides that make up the Egyptian section. Now that I had the terrain painted and I uh, just set it up the last of the sort of blending between Rome and the Egyptian area. So now I was going to start building all of the various aspects of the Egyptian area. I wanted to start with the pyramid because the pyramid has a fairly large 5x5 five five, uh, footprint. And uh, I also figured that it would make sense to put the pyramid down first as that way I could sort of design everything else around the pyramid and I was going to have the entrance into Egypt go underneath the period pyramid basically from this intersection here right just near Rome uh, coming out the path 
then coming into Egypt, right beside the pyramid, it sort of comes up from underground. I was originally going to put the Sphinx over there. Uh, that was actually why I started setting up the ground like that. But uh, I decided that I should probably put the coaster down first. And then after building the coaster, I ended up not even putting the Sphinx there as I ended up using that for like roller coaster space instead. So uh, that was interesting. Sort of unplanned uh, bonus design here. But the, what I do do with it, I think, ends up looking pretty good as I have the roller coaster come down in this tight twist, underground, come out, do its uh, two loops. On the way back, it does a loop as well. And then after this, I basically wanted it to just uh, fly around a little bit, go up and around the pyramid, and then uh, do its thing and come back. This was probably the quickest roller coaster to build, aside from uh, the Steel Mini or the Launch Coaster even. I mean the Launch Coaster was the quickest one given that I just used the uh, pre-build, but there isn't really any reason to design your own with one of those. But uh, aside from those two easy ones, I would say this one worked pretty well just right out of the gates. I had to do some tweaking to make it look right and get some of the features I wanted, like the uh, the final loop here. I wasn't sure exactly where I was going to place it, but uh, I didn't end up doing too much tweaking with this. I was pretty happy with pretty well the initial design and I didn't have to change very much. A big reason that I decided to go with the sort of elevated paths in this area was just due to uh, how high the roller coaster station was. I would either have to create very, very tall buildings, which would potentially occlude some of the view, or uh, go with the elevated paths. Uh, but I did make use of the paths in uh, putting some head chopper type setting, you know. Uh, tight paths above the chain lift of the coaster itself so I think that helped a bit I also wanted to go with something pretty bright uh, but still Egyptian color I settled on this sort of like orange and orangey yellow I think it looks really nice and uh, contrasts well with the terrain and background and everything Here I am putting the uh, head chopper areas and then figured I'd have it come down and connect to the path here. Uh, that did end up sort of cutting me off. I was thinking about putting a ride at the northernmost edge of uh, Egypt here, but I just couldn't figure out a way that I could get a path nicely over there with the roller coaster and everything said and done. I just didn't think it would end up looking very good or very Egyptian. For the Ferris wheel, I just put the whole queue line and everything underground. Most of the architecture in the Egyptian section is sort of along the back here, up around the station. I didn't do too much in the lower section. I just kept it kind of deserty and hilly. Uh, but I did want to have some some sort of buildings or something, and it and it made more sense for like where the roller coaster was going in and out uh, instead of just having hills or something. Made a nice little sort of tunnel entrance there when you're going up after the head choppers. I do like the uh, exit into the roller coaster from the station too with the nice sort of gradual hill. I decided I would put some uh, chain link fences uh, all over this area to sort of accent these little uh, 
spot where the roller coaster was really low to the ground or going through the ground. Finally got to use some uh, palm trees and the tropical trees, which if you watch my videos, you know are my favorite trees. I absolutely love those trees. I think they're gorgeous looking in this game. I maybe overdid it a bit given there's no uh, water source in the area. That's something else that I was thinking about putting in, like probably in that lower area. Uh, but I thought that it just wouldn't look that good so close to the lake. And I didn't want to manipulate any other terrain to sort of make a pool area. Uh, so I just left it given that it's desert anyway. I forgot about the, fin the Sphinx uh, making this whole roller coaster and area and things. Uh, so I threw it over by the Ferris wheel as I hadn't put anything there yet. And I figured that I probably wasn't going to put any more rides. And so there it is. It's a way off in the corner. Now it was just a matter of uh, polishing up and uh, doing everything that was needed. I did want a fair amount of uh, infrastructure over here near the pyramid. It didn't make sense that there would be nothing aside from a couple props. Well, this is bringing us to the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed this build. And here is the end result. Thank you.